It is an honour for me to pay my respect to the family of Seamus Mallon, who passed away last Friday. This honour more do almost a horse the clan Seamus Mullen or a was Shea Frequently in this assembly, we focus on our differences as political opponents in a way which disguises the underlying respect we have for those who put themselves forward to seek to improve our society. We have an opportunity to demonstrate that respect today as we express our condolences on the passing of the former Deputy First Minister Seamus Mullen. I said on Friday evening that Seamus Mullen was a towering figure in our politics. That was clear before this assembly was established. He had already demonstrated his commitment to public service as a school principal, but was then motivated to fight against injustice in the political arena in the civil rights era of the day, and as a long-standing deputy leader of his party. In this chamber, we should also recognise his record as a parliamentarian of distinction, whether in this assembly, Westminster or in Shannon Aaron. That reputation was built partly on his personality. He certainly was his own man with strongly held views, but he expressed them passionately, using his talent for a pithy turn of phrase and his dry wit. There are only nine of us remaining in the current Assembly who were elected alongside Seamus in the first Assembly in 1998. And from the perspective of recent political difficulties, it is sometimes easy to lose sight of how far we have come. But when you look back to political relationships in this chamber in 1998, we have travelled a significant distance. It was a challenging time to become one of the first holders of the Office of First and Deputy First Minister with responsibility for leading the institutions, but he held his high record or high regard nonetheless as a straight talker and a man of integrity. When you look back at the Hansards of those early days, there were those two themes he highlighted that remain particularly relevant today. Firstly, he knew that the diversity of political opinion could be a source of animosity, but that being inclusive could offer huge potential that a way could be found to work together. Secondly, he was clear that debates and legislation might set a lead, but that it was mindsets and attitudes in the community and in the streets which were central to taking us all forward. In 1998, Seamus Mullen and David Trimble welcomed Bill Clinton to the Waterfront Hall. In his address, Seamus set out that the road to the future is always under construction. In recent years, he made no secret of his personal frustration that greater progress had not been made, but developments over recent weeks give us the chance to continue along that road. This afternoon, we recognise the huge political contribution made by Seamus Mullen, and I want to give my condolences to his party colleagues in the SDLP. However, we are, of course, mindful that a family is in mourning. Family was important to Seamus Mullen, and one could not fail to have been moved by his account of putting the care of his wife Gertrude above seeking the leadership of his party. So, as I conclude my remarks, I want to express the sympathies of this assembly to Seamus's daughter Orla, his son-in-law Mark, his granddaughter Lara, and his sisters Maura, Jean, and Kate. We hope that in time they can be com comforted by happy memories and their pride in his legacy. Suvnis Siri or Anonymous Eternal rest on his noble soul.